Hello and welcome to Logistic Regression in R. My name is Pete Ferrari and I am with the Simply Learn team and today we're going to cover logistic regression in the R programming language. Logistic regression is kind of a misnomer in that when most people think of regression, they think of linear regression, which is a machine learning algorithm for continuous variables. However, logistic regression is a classification algorithm, not a continuous variable prediction algorithm. Logistic regression is also sometimes called logit regression. In this video, we are going to learn why we would use regression as a predictive algorithm, what is regression, the different types of regression. As I've already mentioned, some regression algorithms are classification algorithms, and some are continuous variable algorithms. Why use logistic regression? What is logistic regression? And then we'll look at a use case, a college admission uh, using logistic regression. So why would we use regression? Well, let's say we had a website and our revenue was based on the traffic that we could drive to that website, whether through R&D or marketing, and we wanted to predict the revenue based on site traffic. And the website traffic would be related to the revenue we could generate. The more traffic driven to our website, then the higher our revenue, or at least that's what we would intuitively assume. And so we need to predict the revenue based on our website traffic. Here we have the plot of revenue versus website traffic. Traffic would be considered the independent variable and revenue would be the dependent variable. Often the independent variable or variables, if we had more than one, could be called the explanatory variables and the dependent variable would be called the response variable. However, we typically refer to them as independent and dependent variables. So our intuition tells us that the independent variable drives the dependent variable and if there is some relationship between the two variables and we would say that there is a correlation between the two variables. And then we may be able to use the independent variable to make predictions about the dependent variable. If you look at the chart on the right, you'll see there is a clear trend between website traffic and revenue. As website traffic increases, the revenue increases, and we could draw a line to show that relationship. And then we could use that line as a predictor line. So for example, what will revenue be if our traffic is 4.5K? We see that when the traffic is around 4,500, the revenue is around 13,000. And if we could draw a perpendicular line from 4.5K on the axis, on the x-axis, the traffic axis, up to the orange regression line, sometimes called the line of best fit, then we could draw another line over to the y-axis, the revenue axis, and we could see where it lands. And that would be the prediction. So in this example, when the traffic is around 45,000, hits, the predicted revenue is around 13,000. Normally, we wouldn't actually draw those lines. We would generate an equation, and we would call that equation a model, and we could plug the independent variable into the equation to generate the dependent variable output, which we would call our prediction. So what is regression? Regression is a statistical relationship between two or more variables where a change in the independent variable is associated with a change in the dependent variable. It's important to note that not all variables are related to each other. For example, a person's favorite color may not be related to revenue from a website. Here, the change in one variable, height, is closely associated with the change in the other variable, age. This makes intuitive sense. As you get older, from when you're born, you get taller. And it seems to make sense if we plot that data, we would see those green points on the graph, up to some certain age where growth would taper off. In the plot in the middle of the screen, we see the clear linear relationship between age and height, which is indicated by the solid red line. We sometimes call that line a trend line or a regression line or the line of best fit. And we see that the height is the dependent variable and age is the independent variable. Of course, you might ask, doesn't height depend on other factors? Of course it does. But here we're looking at the relationship between two variables, one independent and one dependent, age and height. There are various types of regression, linear regression, logistic regression, multiple linear regression, polynomial regression, and there are others, decision tree regression, random forest regression, 
But linear regression is probably the most well known. And by definition, when there is a linear relationship between a dependent variable, which is continuous, and an independent variable, which is continuous or discrete, we would use linear regression. When the y value in the graph is categorical, such as yes or no, true or false, they voted, they did not vote, they purchased something, they did not purchase something, it depends on the x variable. Logistic regression is when the y value in the graph is categorical in nature. For example, yes, no, purchased, don't purchase, voted, did not vote, and it depends on the x variable. Notice the trend line for linear regression and the line for logistic regression. They're different. More on that later. And there's polynomial regression as well, when the relation between the dependent variable y and the independent variable x is in the nth degree of x. Sometimes we say an nth degree polynomial of x. In this picture, you can see that the relationship is not linear. There's a curve to that best fit trend line. So why would we use logistic regression? And we need to understand why we would use logistic regression and not linear regression. Picking the machine learning algorithm for your problem is no small task, and it really behooves us to understand the difference between these machine learning algorithms. Linear regression answers the question, how much? So in our earlier example, if website traffic grows, then how much would revenue grow? Whereas logistic regression would answer what will happen or not happen. Linear regression, in general, is used to predict a continuous variable, like height and weight. Logistic regression is used when a response variable only has two outcomes, yes or no, true or false. Often we refer to logistic regression as a binary classifier, since there are only two outcomes. So let's try to understand this with an example. Let's say we have a startup company and we are trying to figure out whether the startup will be profitable or not. That's binary with two possible outcomes, profitable or not profitable. And let's use initial funding to be the independent variable. Here we have a graph that shows funding versus profit and it appears linear. Once again, our intuition tells us that the more funding a startup has, the more profitable it will be. But of course, data science doesn't depend on intuition, it depends on data. But this graph does not tell whether the startup will be profitable, yes or no. It only states that with an increase in funding, the profit also increases. That's not binary. If we wanted to predict how much profit, then linear regression would be useful. But that's not what we are being asked. Hence, we need to make use of logistic regression, which has two outcomes, in our case, profitable and not profitable. So let's draw a graph again. The x-axis will be our independent variable, funding, and the y-axis will no longer be the dependent variable, profit, but it will be the probability of profit. For example, if you look at a company with a funding of, say, 40, then the probability that that company will be profitable is around 0.8 or 80% based on the best fit line called a sigmoid curve. In the example, we plotted several companies, some with 10, 15, 20, some with 50, 60, or 70, or 65, and we indicated whether they were zero, not profitable, or a one, profitable, on the graph. And this is how we should think of logistic regression. In this example, given the amount of funding, we calculate the probability that a company will be profitable or not profitable. And if we use the threshold line of 50%, then we have our classifier. If the probability is 50% or higher, the company is profitable. If the probability is lower than 50%, it's not profitable. So what is logistic regression? This is a linear regression graph. So let's compare linear regression to logistic regression and take a look at the trend line that describes the model. It's a straight line, which is why we call it linear regression. But using linear regression, we can't really divide the output into two distinct categories, yes or no. To divide our results into two categories, we would have to clip the line between 0 and 1. If you recall, probabilities can only be between 0 and 1, and if we're going to use probability on the y-axis, then we can't have anything that is below 0 or above 1. Thus, we would have to clip the line. And once we clip the line, we see that the resulting curve cannot be represented in a linear equation. So for logistic regression, we will make use of a sigmoid function, and the sigmoid curve is the line of best fit. Notice that it's not linear, but it does satisfy our requirement of using a single line that does not need to be clipped. For linear regression, we would use an equation of a straight line. 
y equals b sub 0 plus b sub 1 times x, x being the independent variable, y being the dependent variable. But as we've said, we cannot use a linear equation for binary predictions, so we need to use the sigmoid function, which is represented by the equation p equals 1 divided by the quantity 1 plus e to the minus y e being the base of the natural logs. Then taking the log of both sides and solving, we get our sigmoid function. In graphing it, we get our logistic regression line of best fit. The applications for logistic regression are endless. Here, we might have a couple of gardeners or farmers, and one farmer says, I am planning to grow plants in my backyard. And I want to know whether my trees will get infested with bugs, which I'm sure is a huge problem. And these days, the fewer pesticides we use, the better off we are for health reasons. The young lady says, I can use logistic regression in a model to predict it for you. And the other farmer says, well, how is logistic regression going to help? But we know that healthy versus not healthy is a binary classification. And we can use a binary classifier like logistic regression to solve this problem, which is what the young lady has in mind. If we have the data, we can model the data and generate a sigmoid function that best fits our data and then use the probability of a healthy tree versus a not healthy tree or an infested tree. Once again, we see our sigmoid line of best fit and some points that represent healthy trees and not healthy trees. Once again, we plot our sigmoid curve, scratch that. And once again, once our sigmoid curve is plotted and our threshold is set almost always at 50%, we can use the sigmoid curve and calculate the probabilities and here the independent variable of width, which I assume is an application of pesticides or no pesticides, to determine whether or not the probability of healthy is greater than 50% the threshold or less than 50% the threshold. And now let's take a use case of a college admission problem. Of course, we can't solve anything using data science if we don't know what the problem is. So we need a problem statement. And here, the problem statement is simple. We are given a data set and we need to predict whether a candidate will get admission in a desired college or not based on their GPA and college rank. So the very first thing we need to do is import the data set. And if it's a small enough data set and it can fit into our computer memory, then we are golden. Otherwise, we have some work to do. The data set that we were given is in CSV format, comma separated values. CSV files are easily imported into our environment. Once we import the data, we next need to select and import the libraries that we will need. Although R is a great programming language with a lot of built-in functions, it is easily and powerfully extended by the use of libraries and packages. Then we need to split the data set into a training set and a test set. It's important to note that the data set that we've imported, that we were given, has the GPAs and college ranks for several students, but it also has a column that indicates whether those students were admitted or not. So what we're saying is that the data set has the answers. And if you think about it, it must. How could we possibly train a model, have a model learn, if we didn't know the answers already. That's why it's called machine learning. So we train the model and then we test the model. Once we split the data into training and test sets, we will apply our regression on the two independent variables, GPA and rank, generate the model, and then run the test set through the model. Once that is complete, we will validate the model to see how well it performed. So now it's demo time. So here we have our studio, my favorite IDE, or integrated development environment. And I have a script already composed to run our logistic regression on the problem at hand, which is our college admissions problem. So let's just walk down the script before I run it and talk about the various points in the script. So first, define the problem. Well, the problem was defined, and you really can't do anything in data science without a clear problem definition. Once the problem is defined, you can load your libraries, acquire your data, set the working directory, in my case I'm on Windows, explore the data, munge the data if necessary, and then prepare the data. Scale the data if necessary, split the data into train and test data sets, then train the model using the training data and run the test data through the model, and then validate the model for accuracy and precision, etc. So here we are going to load our libraries. I'm going to use a package called CA Tools. 
And now that the library is loaded, I'm going to set my working directory. And if I come over here to the files tab, you'll see that there is my working directory. In that working directory, there's a file called binary.csv. And that's the CSV, the comma separated value file that the college gave me. I'm going to ingest and then look at that data. And as you can see, it has four columns, GRE, GPA, rank, and then the answer column, admit, whether or not someone was admitted, which would be a one, or not admitted, which would be a zero. And if we come over to the right, and we can look and see some of the first few values of each of those four columns. Now let's split the data. We're going to take this my data frame and split it into two, a training set and a test set. And the ratio we're going to use is 80-20. So 80% of the data will go into the training set and 20% will go into the test set. Now that ratio could be 60-40, it could be 70-30. Typically it really depends on the size of your data, how much data you have. But this is for our example and for our purposes, 80-20 is perfect. Next we'll do a little data munging. In general, you munge the data early on after ingestion and you really have to be careful. In this case, we don't have any missing values. We don't have any real outliers. Our data was pretty clean when we got it and ingested it. But in general, that's not the case. And a lot of work and a lot of attention needs to be paid to the munging process. Here, we're just going to take our data, the admission column and the rank column, and convert them to categorical variables. Right now, they're integers, as you can see on the right-hand side. And once I run these two lines, they will be converted to factors. And now the fun stuff. We're going to use the GLM function, the general linear model function, to train our logistic regression model. And the dependent variable is admit, and the independent variables are GPA and rank. And the little tilde sign here says the dependent variable will be a function of GPA and rank the two independent variables. The data will be the training set, and the family will be binomial. And binomial indicates that it's a binary classifier. It's a logistic regression problem. There it is. We ran our model and there's a summary of our model. You can see that there is some statistical significance in GPA and in rank by the coefficients and output of the model. So next let's run the test data through the model. And once we have done all that, we can now set up a confusion matrix and look at our predictions versus the actual values. Again, this is important. We had the answers and now we took and we predicted some answers. So hopefully our predicted answers match up with the actual answers. We'll run a confusion matrix. As you can see, the predicted values versus the actual values. And it's important here to note that if it was predicted false and it was actually false, and we see 189, or if it was predicted true and it was actually true, which is 27, we did well on those. But there are a few that were predicted incorrectly. Some were predicted true but were actually false. Some were predicted false that were actually true. And now we'll confirm what our percentage accuracy is, 72%. Not bad, but we could probably do better. How? We'll leave that to another video. But for now, let's talk about our key takeaways. So what are the key takeaways? We've learned why we use regression, what regression is, and some of the various types of regression. We also learned why we would use logistic regression. It is a binary classifier, and it's very good at that in general. Are there other binary classifiers? Sure, but logistic regression is easy to understand and easy to implement. And sometimes it's the first choice. What logistic regression is, as opposed to linear regression and other types. And then we used our college admission problem as a use case and used logistic regression to answer our questions. Thank you for joining us and I hope you have enjoyed this training session. Feel free to post your questions in the video. For more information, please visit www.simplylearn.com and we will have a support page posted there. If you like this video, please subscribe so that you can be notified of new content. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.